Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. All praise due to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one, and whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can show Him guidance. May peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all the prophets and messengers. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome again to a new episode of the Prophet's Prayer. Last time we were talking about how can one develop khushu'a in his and her salah? How can one enjoy really their salah? And we remember together how the Prophet ﷺ once was praying and he was crying to the point that he wet his beard, he wet his clothes and he wet the floor beneath him with his tears because of the verses he was reciting Wasallam. It's not important to recite the entire Quran in your prayer. What's most important is to reflect and ponder upon the meaning of what you're reciting. Al Hassan once prayed all night long and he was reciting one ayah, repeating this ayah over and over and over. It is the ayah of وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا which means and if you try to count Allah's blessings and favors you can never keep record. They said that you just been reciting the same ayah over and over. He said, I've been reflecting upon Allah's favors and na'am upon us. As long as you're focusing in your prayer on what you're reciting, what you're supplicating, knowing that you're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means you are in the right track. And your prayer will be accepted. Keep in mind that the Prophet wasallam said that uh, when, when he finishes his prayer, he might only get one-tenth of a word of this prayer. One-ninth, one-eighth, one-seventh, one-sixth, one-fifth, up to one-fourth, one-third, or maybe half of it. So what happened to the rest? If you're not attentive, that doesn't count. If you're not paying attention, that doesn't count. What counts is only what you're focusing on while you're praying, standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in one hadith, whenever any of you pray, he is yunaji rabbah, he's conversing with his Lord. So let everyone pay attention to the one whom he's conversing with or speaking to. We have learned before that, once the person begins his prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in a dialogue with him. So if the person recites Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, praise be to Allah, the Lord of all that exists, Allah answers him, my servant praises me. And when the servant recites Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah the Almighty answers back, my servant exalted me. And when the servant recites Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, My servant glorified me. And whenever you come to say, It is only you whom we worship, and it is only you whom we seek his help. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, That is between me and my servant. And for my servant is what he asked for. He should get what he's asking for. So get ready to ask. Guide us, all of us, to the straight path. The path of those whom you bestowed your favors upon them. Not of those who gained your anger and wrath. Nor of those who went astray. That's why, <coughs> whether you are an imam, or a follower, you should reflect upon the beautiful verses which you're reciting. If you're a follower and you hear the Imam is reciting so, you get ready to say, Ameen. So the Imam was reciting and you're saying to his supplication, Oh Allah, answer the Imam's supplication. Oh Allah, respond. But if you were sleepy and absent minded in the Salah, just prisoned by the body, it's going to happen to you. What happened to a person who was praying with me, Taraweeh, once? And I was reciting a long recitation. I happened to recite in Surah Al-Waqi'ah. 
And I came to recite the verse, وَأَمَّا إِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ الضَّالِّينَ Thereupon, I heard one of the followers was saying, Ameen. And he was odd. He sounded odd. Basically, that says and that proves the person is being present there, body without mind, without heart, because the heart is somewhere else. Anyway, that happens. But that's why if you're reciting or if you're listening, listen to this. The Prophet ﷺ was recorded as that he would recite slowly with a beautiful slow rhythm, with a beautiful recitation, and he would stop and pause by the end of every ayah. Why? If you keep in mind that after you recite the ayah, Allah is answering you back. So why is a hurry? Why is a rush? You wait. And you do not join several verses together. So the practice of some people, what they call them an express recitation, doesn't work with us. Understanding not necessarily all the meanings, because I understand that some would say, well, I'm not lucky enough to know Arabic. I wasn't born with an Arabic tongue. I don't know what the Sheikh is reciting. I have memorized certain surahs, but I don't even know their meanings. Well, whenever you're reciting yourself, at least, at least spend some time to learn the meanings of the surahs, even the small surahs, which you have memorized, so that you can enjoy the recitation in the salah. This is the meaning of a salah, a connection, a dialogue between the servant and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, another very important mean can help us to develop khushua in salah is, as the Prophet sallallahu advised us, that whenever you come to pray, remember death. What happens in the salah, we remember everything that we have forgotten, even the lost items, everything that's worldly, to distract our attention from what we should be focusing on, which is a salah and Allah. So when you remember death, that eliminates this factor of distraction. What happens, the Prophet ﷺ says, pray as this is your farewell prayer. Just imagine, death, this prayer could be your last prayer. How will you pray it? If this is your last prayer, if you are told the last act of worship that you're going to make before you die, is this very last prayer. How would you pray? Do you think that you would have any chance to think about your business, about your family, about your vehicle, about anything else? Of course not. You would focus on one thing, how to make it perfect so that it would be accepted. Not one-tenth, not one-half, but one hundred percent. So remember, death, this is not scary, but it is one of the means which would help the person to acquire khushua in the salah. We have to keep in mind that we're always in a battle with a shaitan al rajim the outcast Satan. A shaitan promised and he made a vow that ثم لآتينهم من بين أيديهم ومن خلفهم وعن أيمانهم وعن شمائلهم that I shall come to them from in front of them and from behind, I shall come to them from the right, from the left, from every direction. Why? To mislead us. So are you going to be inactive, passive, not do anything? Of course not. Especially when you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us that كيد الشيطان is weak. إن كيد الشيطان كان ضعيفا. Indeed, the plot and the plans of Satan are very weak. Shaitan, you can defeat easily. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called him al waswas because he whispers. That's his job. That's his main task in life to whisper. But al khanas that he turns back, he runs away, he disappears once you mention the name of the most powerful one. That's why we begin our prayer by seeking refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan. A'udhu billahi min al shaitan al rajim or a'udhu billahi al-sami'i al-alim min al-shaytan al-rajim min hamzihi wa nafkhihi wa nafthih that helps a lot 
to cut all the roads on shaitan. That can mislead you. Many people complain that I can never concentrate in my salah. Shaitan is always after me. And this is a reality. As a matter of fact, one of the companions by the name Abu al-As came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Ya Rasulullah, as shaitan always comes in my way while praying, confuses my recitation. I, I don't know what I'm reciting. I cannot focus in my prayer. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Sure, this is a shaitan by the name Khanzab. His main task is to divert your attention while praying, is to confuse your recitation, is to make you forget the number of sujood, the number of ruku'ah, is to confuse you in your salah, to make you gain zero percentage of your salah. So, whenever you experience that or you feel him, do this. Listen to this prescription, the prophetic prescription, as how to defeat a shaitan in your salah. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, seek refuge with Allah from a shaitan al rajim. Say, A'udhu Billahi Min shaitan al rajim. And turn lightly to the left and spit or blow thrice without excreting or taking any saliva out of your mouth. So it is blown. Yet filu an yasarihi thalathan. Like this. If you do that, a shaitan would run away. And you will focus in your prayer. Each time you feel that a shaitan is after you, because he's like making an ambush. He's waiting to interrupt you, to make you lose your prayer. That's his main task. So you can defeat him by seeking the help of the greatest help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, we're having so many beautiful opportunities to live with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the salah, in the entire salah, particularly while in sujood, while making dua, we're required and we're asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to supplicate to him, invoke him and beg of him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord have said, supplicate to me, invoke me. I shall answer you. The best position to do so is while you are in sujood. As the Prophet ﷺ said, فَأَكْثِرُوا مِنَ الدُّعَاءِ وَأَنْتُمْ سُجُودِ Keep your mind and heart busy living the company of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you may develop khushua. Jazakum Allahu khayran. And hope to see you next time. We'll continue with developing khushua in as-salah. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته